Clinton that's brought in there. And now all the big pundits at CNBC, CNN are saying it's a global depression. It was always one. It was always designed to be one. Told you this 10 years ago. Told you four years ago. Told you three years ago, a year ago, six months ago. I told you they'd announce a bank of the world, global currency as the answer to the global meltdown. Why do I know? I don't have a crystal ball. How do I know? I know because it's in the Trilateral Commission documents that are public from 1975 and 1976. This has all been planned. We'll be right back. The new world order is upon us. Hi, this is Alex Jones. You know, up at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com, we have a link to a London Independent newspaper article that says conspiracy theories are running rampant and taking over. And these people are dangerous. And then the first thing that they talk about in the article is these crazies think the government can track you with GPS with your phone. And we just post a blurb of the article with them saying that and then link to the London Guardian and other mainstream news with the headlines, government tracking entire population in England and U.S. without warrants, with GPS triangulators built into your phone. Technically, there's not GPS in most phones. It's a cell tower that is GPS triangulator. So they triangulate your GPS. It's not GPS. It's triangulation using GPS. So that's how they uh, you know, try to play mind games. Well, it's not GPS, it's triangulation. So instead of down to five feet, it's down to 10 feet. But really, the system works down to about two inches. <laughs> yeah, I was um, out at the ranch. I wasn't deer hunting, but there were some people down there deer hunting, and one of them lost his uh, phone riding on his four-wheeler. And he just uh, it was out there on you know 1,000-plus acres somewhere. He just went to his find uh, software on his laptop on Wi-Fi with the app he had, and it, it zoomed in right on the spot, showed him the triangulated area with a satellite photo, and uh, he was then able to hone right in on the spot where it was at down to one foot. My point is, you point out what's going on, you point out the reality, and you get called a conspiracy theorist. Hey, look at this. Merck's Kenneth Frazier to head up Penn State Investigation. Merck CEO, they've, they've brought you uh, all, all those great drugs, including Gardasil, that they knew was killing people in the trials. Then they just get government to mandate it, so then they get vaccine protection and liability protection with a uh, product causing autoimmune diseases and death. Uh, but uh, he'll uh, now go run the uh, nice little tidying up, the not, probably a nice bucket of white paint uh, there. And, of course, all the other great drugs Merck's brought you. I mean, have you forgotten? I mean, they had Rick Perry come out and say, it's the law, got to take Gardasil. And we said, there's no law. You, nowhere in the U.S. can they make you take a shot unless you're in the military. And then even that is a approved by the FDA shot. Nothing experimental. And the smallpox and anthrax shots are experimental. And the, and the military is like, wow, really? Yes. And then, of course, that got overturned because people pointed it out. They tried to court-martial a few Army doctors at first who pointed it out, but it didn't matter. They had to back off. See, we're informed, but I remember being in the newspaper in Texas and nationally, Alex Jones and, and medical doctors he has on claim it's not the law. You have to take it. They're conspiracy theorists. Mm. They claim the governments can track you in live time without warrants. Now it's all over the news. But they still come out and say we're crazy. Kind of like I said, they'd announce a bank of the world after they started imploding the European Union. I said this a decade ago, plus. And that they would then announce a bank of the world with a global currency that you'd pay carbon taxes, VAT, and sales taxes to. It's now in the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Financial Times of London. The Vatican's called for it. Time Magazine, Newsweek, and everybody else. Just type in world government a solution to Greek crisis, and it's right there. And, and we told you... The Irish crisis, the, the Icelandic crisis, uh, the, the Grecian crisis, that after each crisis and after each new trillion plus that the private bankers that created the derivatives got, and after taxes were raised, it would only cause things to get worse and the next country to implode. Oh, and I said several years ago with our expert guest, because I spend 18 hours or more a day totally focused on this, so I am a super expert. Yes, it's true. Everybody who's looked at it knows it's true. I told you next it would be, oh, I'm sorry, it's all on record. <laughs> I told you it would be Italy, then Spain, then Portugal, 
then France, then Denmark, right down the line, every European Union member. They've already bankrupted all the Eastern European countries that were brought in and the 25 group as it implodes back to the 15 and the 10. And it'll implode, 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 and then they'll bankrupt Germany last. Now, you've heard it here over and over and over again. Countless articles written, countless interviews, and you're going to see it happen. It is a controlled demolition of the world economy, period. And uh, here's an article out of the Business Insider. To save Europe, they had to kill democracy. And I've heard this on Bloomberg. I've heard this on CNBC, MSNBC. And people are like, you heard it on TV? Yeah, I don't really watch TV. I listen to it on XM. I'm addicted. I can walk around the house with a receiver. I can uh, be in the yard. I can be in my car everywhere. I, I can turn it up in the shower. I can listen to everything. And I can monitor the propaganda without looking at the bags of pus. Like Newt Gingrich, one of the new Republican frontrunners, supports global government in books, he wrote, openly supports open borders in the past, openly uh, supports carbon taxes. And I'll get emails from you saying, oh, shut up. That's not true. Oh, kind of like I told you, Rick Perry worked for Al Gore and supported carbon taxes and supported Hillary Care and supported gun control and supported open borders and amnesty cities. <laughs> and then you tell me I'm a liar, but then later it comes out mainstream and you have to apologize. Because you're going, well, wait, this year he tried in the legislature to pass an end to sanctuary cities, which he covertly killed himself. He kills bills, he gets introduced. So he can have cake, eat it too. It's called a fraud, called a scam, called a bamboozling. Don't be a sucker. Don't be a schmuck. Don't be an idiot. And now it's all come out. And Mitt Romney, oh, gun control, abortion, open borders, sanctuary cities, wrote Obamacare, is praised by Al Gore for total carbon taxes. But with him, you tell conservatives, and they go, well, I like carbon taxes and turning guns in. I like open borders now. Okay, then, you deserve everything you get, just like the Obama zombies. You people that support mainline, blue blood, establishment, corporate whore, New World Order Republicans, get what you deserve. You toady up to them like some stray dog in the forest. You toady up and, 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 and lick their boots thinking you're part of the power structure because you sign on to who they've told you the winner is. And politically, Mitt Romney shoves a shotgun right in your face like some stray dog somebody's getting rid of and just pulls both triggers. Your whole head blowing off and as your brain splatter, the last thing you're thinking about is a big heart with a big arrow through it. Oh, Romney, you want my guns? You can have them. Oh, Romney, open borders. Oh, you wrote Obamacare. We love you. We love you. We're idiots. We're morons. You know, I told you I would uh, get into uh, Israel. You know, you know, I love how they say support Israel, support an attack on Iran. When I've seen polls in Israel of upwards of 70 plus percent, other scientific polls, 55, 60, some 45. But in most polls, the majority of Israelis who live there are not for attacking Iran. They've had all their former intelligence chiefs come out against it. And you know what they've said, even in the Washington Times and Washington Post? This is about Obama getting a political distraction. He's, he's acting like he's against it while he's fully behind it. And it's about Benjamin Netanyahu, the head of the Likud party, getting to be a big hero when his ratings are down. Because a war, when you get in a war, people support you even if they were against the war. Once it started, they get behind you. And then all those riots in Israel over their depression might, might not get as much attention. So I'll, I'll briefly get into this. Ron Paul, give the number out. They get into all the other news and chemtrails. That's coming up. Stay with us. Okay, we are back live. I'm going to go ahead and give the number out, the toll-free number to join us. It's different than the weekday radio show from 11 to 2 because uh, that show, the Minnesota Network headquarters, takes the calls. Uh, we do it right out of our own studios here on Sundays, so 100% produced right here. It's 877-789-ALEX, 877-789-ALEX, 877-789-ALEX. 2539 uh, on any of the issues we've raised or any issues you'd like to raise or if you disagree with me or have a question comment whatever the case is 877-789-2539 and we'll open that phone system here in just a moment it's computerized so then we got to make sure we open it up 
Okay, uh, look, I've already talked a lot about Israel, but after I covered geoengineering and the climate manipulation by the globalist, because we already have a global government. It's a private, corporate, world government, anti-free market, shadowy, but now coming out into the open. After I get into this news, then I want to go back into Iran and then into your calls. But all day, it's, you know, the Iranians are going to get us, oh my gosh. But the Associated Press and others are reporting higher radiation levels in every country of Europe. And they're saying, just don't worry about it. And they're saying they don't know where it's coming from, but it's the radioactive iodine isotopes that are only released by fission and meltdowns and reactors. The French have had a couple disasters the last few months. The Canadians have had disasters. Plants in the U.S. have had releases. Uh, the five of the six melted down, exploded hulks in Fukushima. Japan blowing right across the Pacific Ocean. They're still melting down wildly. But nobody's concerned about that. In Europe, they've just raised the level. Oh, radiation's up? We'll just raise what we say is safe. Oh, it's way up in the U.S., sometimes thousands of times what was safe previously? We'll just raise the level. It's like I'm living in the twilight zone. It really makes my head spin that this is going on. And then all I'm hearing about all day is Iran, Iran, Iran. And then it's actually in Reuters... But it never gets any attention. And Paul Watson earlier uh, last week put together a bunch of government documents, White House press releases under Bush and Obama to admit our so-called government for five years at least has been staging terror attacks all over Iran, blowing up military bases. They blew up one today. And, of course, the Iranians don't want to look powerless, so they're like, oh, it was an accident that our top general in ballistic missiles was blown up with a bunch of his troops. Uh, accidentally at a, at, a, at a military base. But, but their actual Supreme Council has come out, and our own government, and the Israelis admit, they've got special ops on the ground with uh, other locals and with Wahhabist groups out of Iran, real al-Qaeda, just like real al-Qaeda was used to overthrow uh, Gaddafi, and to a lesser extent, Husn Mubarak of Egypt. And then I got to be lectured all day. The government has to stick their hands down my pants at the airport uh, because uh, with dirty gloves, with you know, flesh-eating bacteria dripping off of them, that's come out in the news, or try to force me into a microwave or try to grope my children because Al-Qaeda is going to get me and you just gave them. They actually, the government is Al-Qaeda in Libya. They're actually flying the Al-Qaeda flag. That's in the news. And it's like, well, that's the good Al-Qaeda. And yeah, there's a few thousand sh shoulder launch service to air missiles that can take anything down and 8,000 other ones missing, but don't worry about that. The government wants to set up domestic checkpoints and is now doing it federally run that violate the 10th Amendment to search you randomly because Al Qaeda. But then you get the internal training manuals. It's all about gun owners, libertarians, constitutionalists, conservatives. The very people, some of them, cheerleading the police state in the name of keeping them safe. So Israel, look, Israel, that is the government of Israel. We're told, back Israel. I'm not against Israel. I'm not against any of these countries. But I'm against the corrupt governments that get power and political uh, gravitas out of wars because we primitively rally around the government when it starts a war. It's primitive that when the enemy's coming, you rally around the chief. But these aren't our hereditary chiefs. These aren't our uh, people that are on our side. They're, they're punching our primitive instincts like a dog growling at somebody that, you know, knocks on the window at night. They're punching our buttons. Who is the U.S. government? It's a vending machine for foreign interest who've gotten their people into every regulatory position where if little guys try to go and put money in the vending machine, it's called bribery. If U.S. companies or smaller companies do it, I mean even billion-dollar companies are small, they get indicted, they go to jail. It's only the big Fortune 100 can do whatever it wants. You want to launder $378 billion in your Wachovia and Wells Fargo? Do it. Your Bank of America, 